to standards such as HL7. Okay, it seems that we had a slight technical situation here because for some reason the broadcasting had been stopped in, in between. Uh, so uh, if you were in the audience, you might have missed the first question. Sorry about that. So recap quickly. <laughs> uh, the API Day special chat joined there after the closing words. It's cool. Uh, then Torsten was uh, kind of reflecting on the healthcare uh, APIs, which are not that familiar to him, but he was able to spot right away the kind of security and privacy and complexity issues. And Vlad was talking about how HIPAA is very demanding as a standard. And Eon was talking just now about uh, the uh, kind of non-compliant healthcare records, if I was getting it right. So continue from there. And sorry, guys, about technical stuff. Yes, Eon, did you have anything to add to the yeah. non-compliant healthcare? The only thing that adds uh, to your summary would be that those non-compliant uh, medical records that exist currently are they take uh, quite a tremendous amount of effort to, to be made into uh, compliant records because there's a lot of engineering as well as medical work that needs to go into them in order to have them follow a sort of standards such as HL7, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you guys, with Vlad and Neon, you were listening in uh, probably to Thorsten's presentation about the service mesh, and, and it seems to be a total mesh here at API Days Helsinki. Everybody's talking about meshes, especially the sponsors. I've never seen so many workshops on, on meshes in, in, in one conference, but so what do you think about this kind of service mesh versus, um, well, I don't know, traditional integrations of APIs, does it bring anything specific or specific problems or benefits in healthcare, for example? I don't know, it, it's a bit wide question, but you can also answer in general. Well, I can I can answer. So uh, let's say my, my direct experience developing medical software is already like uh, one or two years uh, old, but uh, at that time we were using microservices. Uh, service mesh was not that not as as mature as it is today, uh, but there were quite a lot of of, of issues of uh, how to operate uh, a service that where you have microservices that might come and go, and how this. Uh, can be managed. Uh, we came up uh, with quite a lot of uh, bespoke solutions. Uh, they were working, but they uh, uh, require quite a lot of engineering effort. And uh, I think that uh, uh, if you would have to start from scratch nowadays, or if I would have to start from scratch, I would use as much uh, uh, as possible technologies that are uh, developed for other domains. So uh, we don't have to stop at adopting uh, like the the, enab uh, the enablers of the internet, like uh, JSON, OpenID, uh, Connect, uh, and things that uh, a standard organization like HF7 has done. Uh, but we can take mm -hmm. also uh, these things that will make uh, the life of the developer and uh, also uh, operator easier and especially uh, manage services by the cloud providers. Those are something that uh, I think that it will make some difference in the in the future. Yeah, I guess that completely custom solutions usually tend to be also a very messy one in terms of compliance. It's very heavy to maintain and, and even heavier to provide proof that your solution is compliant. So especially with microservices and meshes, you, you have to be very careful about where is the code and where is the data and what's happening to it. Anything you want to kind of add into this, you know, raise up another topic. I, I fully agree with Vlad. He made extremely good points. And he also mentioned that 
uh, the engineering work that needs to go into making a mesh is extensive. Um, I also think that uh, from my own experience and from um, how the industry has sort of been operating and moving forward, I've noticed that, you know, since a single medical record can contain up to 100,000 different data fields, such as imagery, videos, structured and unstructured text, it is really important to have different services deal with different type of data because while there, there is definitely more to secure and to cover, uh, you can have separate points of failure, meaning that if one service is compromised, you can isolate it so it doesn't compromise the whole system. And from a security point of view, this can lead to uh, less data being leaked uh, to the public. And also it means that different engineering teams can focus on different services, allowing uh, each service to really be focused on what it is supposed to do. And that might produce um, better performance and just generally a higher quality overall system for patients and people in general. Yeah, and I, I would imagine that when we, like Vlad was bringing up the kind of device uh, related software, so ECG machines and, and all of that. So kind of uh, uh, these healthcare <laughs> APIs and systems can literally kill someone, which is 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 not the funniest thing. So what about Thorsten? What do you think that uh, are there any kind of benefits or, or downsides with service meshes and, and, and huge amounts of different kind of data and, and structured, unstructured and, and this kind of separating the and isolating the systems is it is it kind of in the scope of service mesh or is it totally kind of no i mean as ignorant of that? i mean as ian has already pointed out i mean um you will or you have to deal with a huge variety of uh, services right i mean not just in the healthcare industry but i mean um you have many different data sources or services that you need to bring together and as Vlad has also said, I mean, standardization is key, right? You need to have standard technology, so to have a, a easy to integrate landscape. And um, I mean, you should use uh, frameworks as much as possible, right? I mean, you can have uh, your cloud providers offering platforms uh, for running your uh, microservices in a containerized way. Um, and of course, from my perspective, governing such a landscape is a very important thing so that you keep the control over your business application. Um, and um, that is what I think is a challenge, right? I mean, um, as Ian has said, it's kind of challenging to find all the developers that are able to cope with the technical challenges. And um, as I said, I mean, using frameworks uh, and uh, standards, I think that's key. I may add here that uh, uh, so third party components, so a system, but both, but also software in this area are a hot like topic. Uh, so as a manufacturer of a medical device, you are responsible for the entire behavior or the, the what your service does, regardless of who provided uh, these uh, uh, components. And uh, uh, we, we see more and more these days that, okay, we use uh, uh, already, uh, or we use system developed by other people which tend to be complicated. Uh, uh, in other industries, it is easy, or let's say easier to just uh, install or take some containers developed by somebody else. But in this particular one, you need to understand how how they operate or what does it happen, what it happens inside. And uh, I think that uh, uh, maybe, maybe the cloud like the mainstream cloud makes this task a bit difficult in a way because it makes things too easy. Uh, if you develop software or libraries, again, it is very easy to just install another component. Uh, and uh, uh, all this, like uh, the risk analysis of, of uh, 
uh, all these third party uh, software components is, let's say, uh, not as it should be. Mm. It, it's challenging because it's challenging even normally, even if you just want to keep track of the normal licensing <laughs> that yeah, yeah. gets used in the software code. So, right. so in this case, and, yeah. And I think, yeah, I mean, third party security is a topic, right? I mean, it is, uh, I mean, you can't implement software nowadays without using third party and therefore uh, you need to find a way how to uh, make sure that the third party is fulfilling your security requirements. And I mean, you have to apply techniques like secure, static security scanning and all these kinds of verifications. And I think, of course, in the security, uh, sorry, in the healthcare area, it's even more obvious that this needs to be done. But I think it's a requirement that uh, also applies to other uh, areas as well. So I think that's key. I mean, third party, Helps, right? I mean, uh, for example, in certain areas, you should not start building your own software for doing encryption and stuff like that. I mean, you are supposed to use third party. And I think that also applies to other components. And But you need to, as you have said, you need to be able to uh, be in control of the components that you are using. But that actually brings me to uh, kind of maybe even the final question looking at the time. But uh, you guys talked about the standards of healthcare APIs and and then there's the whole question of like should you build your own or should you use a standard uh, component or API or you, should you use like uh, a known third party component but if you talk about the API standards in healthcare we we were talking about uh, API standardization in traffic um, in the in the b in previous track and there the problem was that there wasn't enough standards so now in healthcare <laughs> there are standards but are there situations where you would not recommend using them like you know when we have different kinds and and, and levels of, of um, uh, service and, and application and uh, device providers so are there are there certain areas of healthcare where you absolutely wouldn't recommend using for example, fire or or other standards, or should they always be used? Like if we compare some, some somebody goes to uh, to have like non-selective or uh, beauty <laughs> operations, or you know, as opposed to heart surgery. So, do you know of any cases? So the the. I, I think that so traditionally, let's say uh, the hardcore uh, or the, the the ones with background in healthcare, they have stick to standards because they they know the benefits and they know what the standards have been. But probably they have been involved in developing the standards. Uh, the services that uh, have been, let's say, you you could tag them as as wellness or mm. things that yeah. they, they came from the internet side, like, okay, I have a watch, it tells me at what time I wake up in the morning and these kind of things. Uh, they, they uh, uh, historically, they, they don't, they didn't adhere to, to strong standards like, like fire. But uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, in, in any case, so if you look at fire, and I mentioned that it, it is, uh, it is a toolkit. So, it reuses quite a lot of internet standards. Uh, uh, OpenID Connect is basically the, 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 the bare minimum that uh, uh, somebody uses today. So uh, yes, it, it is it ultimately is the, the manufacturer decision to, to uh, select what they want. But I think that it is worth uh, uh, looking at, at uh, uh, what fire uh, specified. They have an, a, a very nice, uh, uh, website where they describe extremely well uh, uh, the the, uh, the content of each resource and they provide also uh, examples of uh, uh, use cases. So it, it is a very good uh, or uh, and also like uh, inf uh, can influence your decisions. Ion, you are uh, starting a in a healthcare. <laughs> so do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, you know, I fully agree with that. It, it really matters on the sort of medical application 
or service they were trying to build a purely healthcare application requires a stronger adoration to, to, to the industry practices and the standards imposed you know, by, by laws. So I, I touched base a little bit during my talk on uh, fines that were given to, to companies for not adhering to those policies. And the, the biggest fine that I remember of is, was $1.5 million for a company that actually had a leak in its database and patient records was, were released to the public. It's very important yes. to follow those policies, in my opinion, because if you adhere to laws and just regulations, it kind of um, covers uh, your organization, but also it shows that those are kind of like the widely accepted standards. So you can kind of show to your patients and users that you do care about their security. I do agree yeah. with that and to say that, you know, if you're building a wellness app, most wellness apps don't really adhere to any policy because because the data that they they store and transmit is not as sensitive. I don't mm -hmm. think that's necessarily a good thing because you know, no one wants to know if, for example, I miss my my morning wake up call from the Calm app and I woke up at you know eleven AM in the morning rather than seven. That that's not good information about me. Uh, but they do they do employ uh, strong security standards, and there's been a certain raise in the number of startups that do automated testing, meaning that uh, static testing, penetration testing are done automatically for apps, and they can definitely increase the security standards of those apps. But I do believe that it is best practice to just follow the re existing regulations that are there and maybe go a little bit over the top as well, but never be under those standards. Yeah, so like uh, security is, is one area of compliance and, and there are so many more as blood perfect email knows because it's kind of your business. But uh, but uh, to conclude, if I kind of pull together and, and add a little bit fin Finnish flavor on it. So in Finland, for example, the national uh, institution for, for the social insurance, Kela, has been uh, having this data, hub or data, uh, storage and APIs uh, that they want uh, these wellness apps and, and healthcare apps and everybody to use. Uh, and and there the interesting thing was that these kind of wellness app providers, for example, were the kind of group that everybody was the least sure of because um, there, there is that kind of, you, you have to step up step up your knowledge about healthcare to understand for example fire and 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 to top that top there is always the national implementation of the standard so it is a standard but hmm it's it has that finnish flavor or the swedish flavor or something else but uh really glad that you could join in with us uh in this q a session and uh, looking forward to see you all with the closing words and the special chat after party and also the audience. And uh, hey, get get some food in you and, and get something to drink and <laughs> join <laughs> up. Okay, and visit the Partners Village for one last time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.